Hi everyone, welcome back to、uh, statistics and data analysis. Today is our second lecture on dis distributions and sampling. Okay, let's start. So in general, we just cannot examine the whole population. In that case, we would rely on a sample so that we can refer or infer the、uh, what's happening in the population. Okay, when you have something、uh, unknown, when you have something that's going to happen in the future, or when you have a too large population that you cannot understand, then you need a sample. We need to choose among different sampling techniques. Okay, something we mentioned in the previous lecture. And whenever you are using random sampling, your what you will see as a sample will be unpredictable. Basically, your sample is random because you don't know what you will collect. So, if you really need to use the sample to infer the population, you need to know the probability distribution of a sample, or the probability distribution of some statistics calculated from the sample. Okay, when you have your probability distribution of a sample, then you can really do a lot of things. Uh, that's something we're going to tell you. So today the topic is that we will focus on sampling distribution. Sampling distribution, which just means the probability distribution of a sample. Okay. So today we will collect sample and try to say, try to find the probability distribution of something calculated from the sample. As an、uh, example or a motivating example, let's consider a factory producing bags of candies. In fact, you will see this factory can actually produce anything. It does. It, this the concept does not is not limited to、uh, bags or candies or whatever. But here,、uh, let's make things simple. So suppose this factory makes、uh, bags of candies. Ideally, each bag should weigh two kilograms. So you hope that all your bags contain basically the same amount of candies, and the 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 standard should be two kilograms. Ah,、uh, unfortunately, the production process cannot be perfect. So there are some fluctuations. A bag of candy, ah,、uh, in that case, we hope at least it should be between one point eight and two point two. Kilograms. Okay, so we know there are some fluctuations, so we somewhat relax our requirements. As long as the bag is within one point eight and two point two kilograms, we will say,、mm, well, it's fine, it's acceptable. Given that this process is imperfect, we say, okay, let X be the weight of a bag of candies. So you can imagine that. Uh, you start the 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 production line, and、uh, you're going to get candies, candies, bags, and candies. What will be the weight for the next bag of candy? Would be somewhat uncertain. Okay, then we use that random variable to denote its weight. If that's a random variable, it has expectation. It has standard deviations, right? So that mu and sigma to note denote that. We would like to know something about this production process because we are the manufacturers. We need to make sure that the quality of our product is good enough. So we may ask questions like this: Well, is my expected value of the production line really two? Or say it in another way: Is my production line satisfies the relaxed requirement or limitations? I hope that my、uh, production process is stable, and I hope that if I cannot make all the bags within one point eight and two point two, at least the expected value should be. So I want mu to be close to two, or say it in another way, I want mu to be within one point eight and two point two. Also, I want. My sigma to be small enough, right? So that I can know that、um, the pro the the qualities of my products is under control. So these are our the eventual questions that we want to answer. Before that, we know、um, we need to rely on sample, right? So let's study the behavior of our samples first. 
So let's do sampling. Suppose in a random sample, I just collect one bag of candies. So I take one bag of candies as my sample, and suppose the weight is two point one kilograms. I want to know, uh, may I conclude that my meal is within one point eight and two point two? Of course, you cannot, because even if one bag of candies is a ro- is is at two point one. You cannot say that they will always be within one point eight and two point two, right? You cannot say that the true population expectation is within one point eight and two point two. So you cannot say that. But we hope that with some probability we can say, okay, whether this is true or not. We want to know what's the average weight of five bags in a random sample is two point one kilogram. If we can answer this, that's a further step. Or we want to ask, what if our sample space is ten, fifty, or one hundred? If I collect one hundred uh bags, and all of them are within one point eight and two point two, I have a stronger uh confidence. Or if I collect one hundred bags and their average is at two point one, I seem to have also a higher confidence. How high the confidence is is our question. Okay. Or similarly, if I collect something and my sample mean is outside the range I want, may I conclude that the process is out of control, or it's just some unlucky event? I need to know that. So we need to know the sampling distribution of those statistics like sample mean, sample standard deviation, etc. If we can say that, then we can really estimate what's happening at our population. Okay, that's the task. So today we will first talk about sample means, or some properties about sample means, and then go one step further to discuss the distribution of sample means, and then finally we will talk about another thing called sample proportions. So, you know what sample means, but let's define it again. Suppose you have a set. Of sample variables or sample、uh, values, okay. You have a sample size n. If this is a sample from a population, then the sample mean is simply the arithmetic average of all your sample values, okay. Sometimes we would write this、uh, subscri- subscript n to x bar to emphasize that the sample size is n. Well, we will do that when it is needed. Also, here let's make an assumption about x i and x j are independent. So that means, uh, what you collect as your first um sample will be indifferent or will be in independent of what you will collect as the second sample. Okay. So you collect one hundred values. We assume that they are all random variables, and what you see here. Does not has any impact on what you see there. This would be a f- acceptable assumption if our small n is quite、uh, is much less than capital N, or we say that、uh, the sam we sample just a few items from a very large population. Okay. Ah,、uh, for example, if among all Taiwanese people you sample one、uh, thousand or one and ten thousand. Per pre people to do some survey, then you satisfy this assumption because your small n is much less than your capital n. In practice, we typically impose a five percent rule, and there is no scientific justification of that. But, uh, in practice, if your sample size is just five percent or fewer of your population size, then you are typically fine to say that x i and x j. Do not affect each other, okay? If you have this, then we say that you have an independent random sample. Then,、uh, most of the good properties you we introduce in this course can be used. So the first thing and the, probably、uh, one of the most important thing that we need to tell you is that for sample means, we know what's the means and the variances, okay? This is a random variable, so it has means and variances. We need to tell you what are them. So, 
Suppose the population mean and the variance are mu and the sigma square,、uh, respectively. Okay, these two numbers are fixed on this somewhere there. We just don't know it. On the other hand, a sample mean x bar is actually a random variable. Okay, because you don't know what you will collect, so you don't know what will be your、um, sample mean. And today, the sample mean would be different from the sample mean from tomorrow. So, in that case, it's a random variable. So it makes sense to ask what's the expected value, what's the variance, or what's the standard deviation. These numbers are all fixed. Okay, are all fixed because. For random variable, these statistics or these properties are just fixed numbers. By notation, we typically write、uh, mu x bar, sigma square x bar, and sigma x bar to denote these three quantities. Now we have a very important theorem. For any population, that means you don't care about the distribution of your population. It can be very weird, but even in that case, for any population, we have this: that x i will be a size n random sample. So you have size n random sample. You have a random sample with n values from a population with mean mu and the variance sigma square. Then what we have is the following: for our sample,、uh, sample mean. The expected value is just the expected value of our population. The variance is the population variance divided by n, so that the standard deviation is the population standard deviation divided by square root of n. Okay, what does that mean? We have some numbers for our populations. Okay, if you still remember, we call them parameters or parameters of our populations. Then we have a statistic, something calculated from our sample. This is random, but it has expectation, and the expected value of sample mean is just the population mean. So we expect to see our random sample to be our population sample mean as population mean. Okay, and also, the random variable、uh, x bar, the sample mean, has its variability. These two formulas tells us that for a sample mean, the population, uh, the sorry, for a sample mean, the variability would be less than would be less than the variability of population. Okay, so. That's something we have in this、uh, theorem. We're going to have some examples. So before we jump into examples, make sure that you really know what we are talking about. Sample mean and the mean of sample mean they are different, right? Sample variance and the variance of sample mean are also different. By definition, sample mean okay just calculated in this formula is a random variable. And the mean of the sample mean is another constant. It describes some important properties of the sample mean, but the two things are definitely different. The sample variance, okay, x square is calculated in this way. Oh, you probably still remember that weird n minus one. And this again is a random variable because you don't know what would be your x i's and you don't know what will be your x bar. So of course this formula may give you some different numbers when you do this and do that then tomorrow, and this has nothing to do with the variance of your sample mean. Okay, this is a random variable. X bar is another random variable. That random variable has its own variance. The two things has nothing to do with each other. Okay, and then. You can go further and know that s square, s square is another random variable, right? So it also has its mean and the variance. Well, technically, we can calculate them, but、um, in this course, it's it's we we probably won't will not do that because it's too tedious and not of too much value. Okay, but keep in mind, 
when you have a random variable, when you have a random variable, you can calculate their mean and their variances. That has nothing to do with sample mean or sample variance. Okay, thank you.